Hey everyone, I'm back for lesson six. At the end of lesson five, you might have noted our code wasn't working quite the way we wanted it to. We're going to start fixing that now. There's quite a few steps involved, but I get, t I get to teach you a lot of new useful code. So I'm just going to add a separator here. Give it a title, optional of course. I'm going to create a new uh, a new function here. So this function, we're going to make it just just as a learning tool. It's not going to be anything useful in the real world. So, anyways, let's uh, let's use a set queue function to create a new a new symbol point one. I'm going to use something called get point. A function called get point. Okay, let's plug that into our our uh, Visual Lisp console and see what it does. So what it did is it made a, it looks like a list and it is a list. It's a point list with an X value, a Y value, and this 0.0, .0 is the, the Z value for that point. We're in two dimensions. So of course, every point's gonna have a zero value for its, its Y value. So with the get point function, you have an option. There's, there's a couple optional things you can add to it. One is a line of text. Let's run that again. You can see my text that I typed there appeared down here. And of course we selected the same point again. Okay, let's do something similar. Let's make another, uh, another symbol, point two. I'm going to put that up here. So that worked OK. But what if we wanted these points to create a line, for instance? I have the option to put an argument right here. That, that argument can be another point, or should be another point, actually. So I'm going to put this in there again, and you'll see the difference. See, now it draws a line, a temporary line, from where my, my first point was selected. You might find it quicker to double click copy and then paste if you don't want to do too much typing whenever I double click on anything words brackets it selects the open or the start deleting and, and following bracket and one thing I'm gonna I'm gonna take the time to do right now is I'm gonna make these all local variables by placing them behind this little slash right here or the backslash So that means these variables will clear because this has a value right now of course it'll clear this variable to nil after this function runs if i don't put these here then they're global variables they'll stay in memory even after the command even after the command finishes okay so i use this all this distance does is it uses these two points to grab a distance add watch to that. Okay, so we have a distance. So circle line circle function. So I'm going to go command circle and when you run the com the circle command in AutoCAD, you first you have to choose a point. So let's just grab this point from up here. So this is the important part of the lesson. We're going to go back 
because our code's not working because of this line. So instead of you of running the mView command and letting the user select the points, we're going to de determine our points up here somewhere, just to give you a, a precursor as to why we're doing this. But right now I'm just doing this function to better teach you, give you a better uh, handle on what we're actually doing. Okay, so we're creating command circle point one. We're going to do a bit of math. I'm not going to teach you too much about math in this tutorial. D1s are distance, right? So all this little piece of math does So 1 quarter times 624.348 is 156.087 I definitely didn't do that in my head, I used, uh, I used the math So when you do math in Autolisp, you have to put here the plus, the minus, times, divide, and then your numbers For example, if I have a... let's do divide 10, 2, just to, this, just to show you what that does, and it's 5. If I switch these around, I'll try not to go off onto too, too much of a tangent, because if I start showing you stuff, it <clears throat> excuse me, turns into a rabbit hole, and you're going to see why. This will confuse you at first. 0, that's not quite right. So these are integers. So 10 divided by 2 rounded down to the nearest integer is 0, of course. Let's put a decimal in one of these numbers and see if that, if that fixes it. 0 0.2, that's a bit better, isn't it? 10.0, let's see what happens. 0 0.2. Let's do something real bad here. Error, divide by zero. No, thank God it didn't crash the computer on us, huh? So just keep that in mind. Math is a little bit strange in Autolisp. And a principle in coding, when you when you do operations with uh, integers, you don't always get the result that you expect, right? Let's just, I'll just show you that again. Divide two by three. Zero, what the heck? Three point. Let's turn one of those, any one of those two numbers into a real. So always bear in mind that if you divide two integers, the decimal result you expect, you won't, you won't actually get it. Okay, so we, we run the circle command, right? You have to specify a point, then you specify either the radius or the diameter of the circle, right? So all this does is it creates a circle. At point one, at point one is the center, and then this will be the radius. If we put d, then uh, then this this would be the diameter because we enter the there's an optional an option to choose either diameter or radius at that point, but it defaults to radius. So this will create a circle that's one quarter the radius of this distance. Let's do command again. Line. Point one, point two, and I have to do add an enter here. So if I just add two quotation marks, that's the same as hitting enter when you're running this this command function. And the reason for that, if you use the the, let's run the line command. The command doesn't end, right? I have to hit enter to actually end, end the line command or else it keeps drawing lines on us. So for this little test code, I need the command, uh, the line command to end. And let's run this again. So we're just gonna draw a circle at point two. Let's end our defund, and let's load it into our into our drawing. One thing I might have forgot to mention is that this backslash n will just display this text on a new line. So we're going to demonstrate that when we actually finally start start running this code. Okay, so we'll load it in, and let's go into our drawing and test out our code. So CLC was our command name. 
Let's put it on a layer that's a bit more clear. So it just draws a line, two circles, and the circles are one quarter of the radius of the length of the line. So it's a fun little code to play with. We won't, wouldn't use this in real life. You might be able to use something similar in an actual uh, production environment. So in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to apply everything we learned just now to our actual to our actual viewport code. We're going to get it working exactly like we want it to. So stay tuned for that. Thanks a lot for watching.